Welcome back. This video is a continuation of our study of lists. I'm going to focus on a handful of useful methods that you can call on lists. In the strings module, you learned about methods. Methods are sort of like functions, except that you call them on something. A method call is of the form thing.method. Methods can also have arguments, just like functions. Lists also have methods. Here's a pretty simple one, count. You call it like this, and it returns the number of times the argument occurs in the list. So in this case, the number two occurs twice in the list, so count returns two. Like the string methods you learned, this method does not have side effects. Basically, that means that my list is unaffected. This actually isn't true for other methods I'm about to show you. It's actually possible to change a list by calling a method on it. Let me show you an example. Check out the append method. Its profile is similar to that of count. You call it on a list, and you give it a single argument. What it does is it takes that argument and sticks it on the end of the list. You can call it multiple times, and it will append something each time. You can append strings, too. Now, in this example, if we know that we want to append the letters A, B, and C, it's a little inconvenient that we have to make a separate call to append each time. It would be great if we could just append not one thing, but a list of things to a list. Let's see what happens when we try to use append in that way. Well, oops, that didn't quite do what we wanted. It does append A, B, and C, but it appends them as a list. Now we have a list in our list, when what we want is just some numbers and some strings. This is what append does. It sticks whatever the argument is on the end of the list, even if that argument is, itself, a list. Fortunately, there's another method we can use called extend, which does exactly what we want. When we use extend, we have to give it a list, well, or a tuple. It then does the work of appending everything in the list, one thing at a time. Like with append, you can call extend multiple times, and it will extend the list each time. Okay, real quick, I'm going to show you a few more useful methods that you can use on lists. Here's one that's pretty straightforward, sort. You call it with no arguments, and it changes the list to be in sorted order. Well, okay, sometimes it isn't super straightforward. When you sort strings, remember that strings are sorted in Python's order, which is sort of like alphabetical order except, for instance, all capital letters come before all lowercase letters. Here's the slide from the control flow module that lists the sort order for some common characters in strings. You can refer to it whenever you want to predict how strings will be sorted by Python. Here's reverse. It just changes the list to be in reverse order. Note that this is not reverse sorted order. If you want to put your list in reverse sorted order, you can do something like this. Sort it first, and then put it in reverse order. Finally, you can use the remove method to remove something. Note that it just removes the first instance of that thing. So in this case, it only removes the first instance of the number 2. The second instance of the number 2, right at the end of the list, stays put. Let's experiment with some of these methods in the editor. First, I'm going to make a list called my list, and it's initially going to be empty. So I put two square brackets right next to each other. Now, if I print my list, it prints an empty list. That's what that looks like. Now, let's add some things to the list using append. My list dot append three, my list dot append eight, my list dot append. 4.5. So we can append different types of things to the list because lists are heterogeneous. Now, if I print my list at this point, now it contains 3, 8, and 4.5. Let's try to extend it. My list dot extend and let's extend it with 7, 8, and 9. And this shouldn't append the list 7, 8, 9. Rather, it should take each thing in this list and append it individually. Now we print it, and sure enough, 7, 8, and 9 are now at the end of the list. Now let's try sorting this, just to see what it does when it has different types of things in it. All right, let's see what the sorted order of this is. Okay, so all the numbers are sorted in the expected order. Now if I reverse my list before sorting it, It actually doesn't change the list, because what we're doing is we're putting it in reverse order, and then we're immediately ignoring that change and putting it in sorted order. If we reverse after the sort, what this does is it sorts the list and then reverses everything in the list once it's in sorted order. So this should put everything in reverse sorted order. And sure enough, there are all the numbers in descending order. Now I can try to remove 
three. And now three is gone. And if I try to remove three again, I get an error. So you're not allowed to remove something that isn't already in the list.